Hi hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a very powerful tool inside of Substance Painter, and these are called Anchor Points. So I'm gonna teach you how you can use Anchor Points to improve your renders. Now, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do here is I have a couple of layers with some metal edgeware for this Pokeball to, you know, make it look a little bit grungier. And one of the very powerful things that we have with our um, Substance Painter software is the fact that we can work in a non-destructive way. So I'm creating a fill layer right now, and if I turn everything off except for the hide information. One thing that I can do is I can push this hide information down and if I add the black mask, I can actually paint, as you can see right there, groups and damage that were not originally there. I have this like triangular alpha right now. So as you can imagine that we're gonna be adding, I don't know, like some sort of like elements right there. And uh, very commonly we could go for instance to our alphas right here. And we have things such as like bolts and, uh, and like, I don't know, like the circle plus thingy. So let's add just a couple here to show you how the anchor points work. So this is good and great, and this is a great way to add detail to hard surface elements, robots, planes, tanks, whatever you do without having to model that thing in, because these details, they do not change the surfaces. So when you're seeing this on a render, people won't really know that those things are not actually there. All of that's baked into the normal map, and we can get some amazing renders. This is how they do it in film, commercial games, everywhere. Now, the problem is if we want to then add, let's say, a rust layer on top of this whole thing, and we did not model these details, when we add our black mask and our dirt generator, one thing that's going to happen is that the dirt generator does not know that it needs to follow the borders of those elements. So here's where anchor points come into play, and you can use them to create a very cool effect. So I'm going to go here. Give me one second, guys. My Sorry about that. So uh, what's going to happen here is we need to tell Substance to find the information of this elements right here, of this height effects. So I'm going to go to the mask right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to call this anchor point. And I'm going to change the name to like a, a test, just like anchor point test. So what I'm telling this, hey, I'm telling this thing, hey, this mask that we have right here, this mask that we painted is now considered an anchor point. And if we go back to our dirt layer, we can activate this and tell this layer to look for that information so that the rust can be inserted into those crevices. So on the dirt layer, I'm going to go here where it says micro details. I'm going to turn on both of them, micro height and micro normal. And then down here on the micro normal thing, I'm going to change this to test. And on the micro height thing, I'm also going to change this to test. And as you can see, we get this. So now Substance knows that those layers exist, and therefore it is taking that information and creating something interesting. However, it's doing it the other way. So I'm going to go all the way down here to levels, and I'm just going to say invert. And as you can see now, we, we get the proper like proportion or the proper effect that we're going for into the crevices of these things right here. So that's how anchor points work. I'm going to now give you an example of how we can make this thing look a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to delete this thing right here, delete this one. And I actually already have a layer with a lot of like crazy stuff. It's of course what you saw on the th thumbnail. These are alphas that I got from uh, JRO, Jonas Ronenberg, I think it's his name. You can look him up. I'm actually going to leave a link down here for him as well. And, um, and you can use this alphas to generate some really, really cool things. But we get the same problem. If I, add to, if I try to add a new rust layer on top of everything, I'm going to add a black mask and say, hey, I just want this to be, let's say, on the on the top and bottom part of the of the Pokeball. And then if I try to um, add a generator, let's say a dirt generator, I'm going to multiply this dirt generator so that it only works on the parts that I selected. Right now, it's not really doing anything, right? Like I tried to do this and it's just doing this generally. And I would like this to go specifically on the crevices of all of these crazy alphas that I added. So how do we do that? Again, we go to the mass right here, which is the mass that has all of our alphas. And we're gonna make that an anchor point, right click anchor point. I'm gonna call this alphas. And now if we go to the dirt, we just go down here to the micro details. We turn on micro height and micro normal all the way down here on micro normal. We select the new alpha micro height, same thing. And if it's doing the wrong like interpretation, no problem, levels, and we just invert. And look at that. We immediately get this very, very cool rust effect going around the whole thing. Now, you guys know my little trick. I'm not going to leave my dirt just doing this, uh, and, and that's it. I'm going to increase the intensity just a little bit to make this a lot like dirtier. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new uh, field layer. This is going to be just a clouds one. So I'm just going to look for clouds, this one right here. I'm going to increase the contrast quite a bit and the balance like that. And then I'm going to multiply this one as well. 
So what that's going to do, as you can see, it's going to erase or, or remove a little bit of the dirt from some of the crevices so we don't have that much effect everywhere. You can play around with the balance. You can play around with the contrast. And this is going to give us a, a really, really nice, like a dirty up, like intense effect. The cool thing about this is you can also use this for metal edgeware. So let's say we want to bring a metal edgeware on top of all of these things right here. So if I go to my elements right here, let's grab like an aluminum, add a black mask. I'm just going to select this top and bottom layer. And I'm going to add a generator. It's going to be a metal edge generator, metal edgeware. You can see that we get the very nice metal edgeware everywhere. But then what we can do is we can also add, or actually on that metal edge generator, if we want the information from the alphas to be represented as well, we can go to the metal edge uh, where generator and add the micro details, true and true, all the way down here, micro normal, and we grab this guy and micro height, and we got this one right here. And as you can see, we get this very nice effect. Now, in this case, it's the opposite. So again, we go to levels and we're going to invert this so that we hit the high points. On the uh, aluminum thing itself, if I go to the height information, I'm actually going to remove the height information. I don't want any height information. And as you can see, we get this very, very nice blend of all of this alphas being like pushed up thanks to the anchor points that are making this whole thing way, way more complex. We could also do the cloud things for our, this Pokeball right here and generate another layer of details. If you want to do it, feel free to do it. But that's pretty much it, guys. That's the anchor points right here. Now, before you go, if you like this video and you want to support the channel and you want to learn a little bit more about 3D, check this out. since my commercial broke, so I'm going to have to do this like ma manually. So we have this course available, which is a triple A weapon creation course inside of Blender. I go through all of the things that you need to create this amazing weapon right here. And some of you were asking about a substance painter course. This is actually a very nice introduction for substance painter because we go over the basics of baking, generating all the maps and doing this texture passes, both for emissive and non-emissive version of our element. So if you want to learn more about substance painter and you want to learn about how to create this amazing thing, just like make sure to check the um the description down here and the link for this course is going to be available for you so yeah that's pretty much it my friends thank you very much hope you liked this video and if you did please subscribe leave a like leave a comment and join us in our discord channel i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye